I think at Christmas, we need to pause and reflect. It is easy for us to see the babe in a manger and recognize that he's a babe in the manger. And we celebrate the fact that there is a babe in the manger. But do we really stop at times to pause and to reflect upon the individuals that played a part in this drama and to ask ourselves, what did they really go through? It wasn't easy for Mary and it wasn't easy for Joseph, but they willingly took part in this drama because they understood that this was God's will for them. I want to read from Galatians chapter four, just three or two verses, really. Uh, I'll read three verses four, five, and six. Uh, I wish I could spend more time on this passage because there is so much that we could take from this passage. But I just want to hit some highlights this morning talking about the fact that as we are, that Jesus left heaven in order to come to this earth. That he left the glory that was there eternally his in order to come to this place and become man. And so we find that Paul writes here, uh, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, So we're under the law that we might receive the adoption to his sonship because you are his sons. God sent the spirit of his son in your hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. And uh, so this morning, I want us to reflect upon those verses, particularly verses four and five. And uh, there are four things here that we see in verses four and five. Four things that talk about what Christ gave up or, or why he gave it up in order to come to this world. As I said, we can easily focus upon the babe in the manger. And we can think that he's like any other babe. But he wasn't. And I know we as Christians, we, we hold to this idea that this is God in the flesh. But how do we describe God in the flesh? I remember years ago when I was first studying uh, in college, that we had this one speaker, well-known speaker, come to our college uh, in order to give a series of lectures. That I cannot tell you how Christ can be 100% human and yet at the same time 100% divine. That is an idea or a concept that escapes our ability to fully understand. But he said this, I can't explain it to you, but I believe it because the Bible says it. And there are things that we may never fully comprehend and fully understand about the coming of Jesus Christ into this world. There are things which only God will know. John Calvin, um, in his writings, in one of his earlier writings, he said this. He said that there must always remain a little bit of mystery when it comes to God. And he said, the danger is that we as Christians, we want to explain everything about God. But in explaining everything, what we inevitably do is we explain away God and that mystery of God. It is hard to hold the mystery of God 
in human minds. And so therefore, even when it comes to Christmas, we may rejoice and we may talk about that babe in the manger. We may talk about Christ coming from heaven down to this earth. But do we fully understand the impact of that? So Paul here to the Galatian church, he's writing and he says to them, he says, but when the set time had fully come. And that's the first thing I want you to notice. That God had a set time. If Christ had come 100 years earlier or 100 years later, it would not have been the right time. God prepared everything for that exact moment in history. And that's why we can have faith and believe that God is always working on our behalf in order to bring about the things that he wants to bring about in our lives. He never ceases working. He is constantly preparing for that moment or that encounter with you. As I shared with the people at Little River this morning, um, we're all coming up to Christmas and I've had to make the hard choice this year not to go be, be with my family again because they're all in New Brunswick and I really don't want to travel to New Brunswick during this time. Not that I have fear that I'll catch it, but because I represent uh, congregation, three congregations which number up to 100 people, I do not want to risk bringing that back and giving it to you. And so I've had to make this choice to not go and celebrate with my family this year. But that is such a small price to pay compared to what Christ paid. When you stop and you realize that he is the eternal God, and yet he stepped out of eternity and stepped into time. And we could talk a lot about time. We could talk a lot about that whole concept. In fact, there are physicists who would tell you that time is not a linear thing like we see it. But instead, time upon our memories, more based upon our interaction with the world around us. And that's how we perceive time. But the reality is that Jesus, the creator of this world, the one who formed everything, he stepped out of that role. He stepped out of all of that glory to come to this world. He allowed himself to be limited. His thing, the eternal, all-powerful God, hungry. The eternal, powerful God, thirsty. The eternal, powerful God, tired, needing rest. These are areas that he laid aside all that glory that was his and took upon the weakness of human flesh. And so Paul goes on and he says, not only when Christ or when the set time had come, but that God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. In other words, Christ stepped into humanity and took on human flesh took on all of the things that we deal with, all of the limitations. He who was limit, limitless allowed himself to be limited for our sake. Oh, there were times that he did great miracles. There were times that he could do things that we can't do. But in order to be truly human, he had to lay aside some of those virtues and become very much like us. 
And so Paul says that God sent his son born of a woman. Notice it says born of a woman. It doesn't say born of a man. Because we know that his conception was, one, was a miracle from God. That the Holy Spirit came upon Mary and produced a child within her. He did not have a physical father here on earth. But there's also something else he didn't have. Something that we take so much for granted. How many of you have sinned today in any way? I've got to put my hand up because I've had thoughts today. I've been angry and frustrated and so on and so forth. All of those are my human weakness. And he who was holy, totally without sin, he became weak for us. Born of a woman, not taking on our sin, but in every other way to be exactly like us. Because scripture tells us that he knew no sin, he did no sin, and there was no sin in him. Jesus Christ was the only person who ever lived that we could say was sinless. And yet he took on every other aspect of our humanity. But why did he do it? Verse 5 says, or verse four says, born under the law. And then verse five says, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the adoption to sunset, to, to sonship. Christ, holy God, gave up so much to come to this world and to take on our human weakness so that we might learn, we might become, for the first time in our lives, truly sons and daughters of God through faith. He came for the express purpose of paying the ransom for our sin in order that we might be purchased by God, redeemed, bought back into a relationship that we had lost the very moment that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden so many centuries before. But did you notice there in the Garden of Eden that when Adam and Eve sinned, that God gave them a promise, even then. To the woman, to Eve, he said that there would be one who would come, a seed that would come, who, whose heel the serpent would strike, but whose head this, this ch child would crush. In other words, Yes, he may be struck down. He may have to suffer for our sin. But in the end, we're the victorious ones because he won the victory. And so when we see that babe in the manger, may the Lord help us to see all that Christ gave up all that he was willing to go through. And as someone that I was visiting with yesterday said, all that we suffer is so small compared to what Jesus suffered for us. God in the flesh.
paying the price for our sin. Holy God, giving up so much for those of us who are unholy. That babe in the manger was no normal babe in the manger. Let's bow in prayer. Father God, help us to appreciate all that Christ, your son, gave up in order to come to this world. You could have very easily just forgotten mankind. But like Noah, somehow we found grace in your eyes. And you gave to your prophets, you gave to your people, such as Abraham, a promise that someday this one would come. But it's easy for us to accept that, but never stop to consider what it truly cost you and what it truly cost Jesus as he willingly came to this earth and willingly gave up these things for our sake. Father, forgive us if we do not see the true babe in the manger. Forgive us if we are distracted by so many things going on, so many things we feel we have to do at this time of the year. But help us to stop, at least for a moment, Lord, and recognize all that your son gave up for us. We ask this in your wonderful name. Amen.